Hi guys, good morning. Um, we are going to work through a couple of problems, which at this point I should have sent you, um, about similar objects. So uh, let's just jump in and go through them. Um, anytime I'm faced with one of these problems, and uh, I think you see number one right up there on your screen, um, I start by writing down three things, and that is R sub L, the ratio of lengths. And let me tell you, those are any lengths. Uh, ratio of areas, and similarly, those are really any areas, and ratio of volumes. And again, these things are all the same as long as we are talking about corresponding lengths, I shouldn't say. It's the ratio of any lengths, ratio of any corresponding lengths. So, uh, even without, uh, without doing this problem, without reading this problem, uh, I can write this down and we can start filling things in. Two, similar octagonal pyramids have base apothems. Okay, well, uh, I started off with the easy one. Uh, an apothem is a length. Uh, and so, basically, they've given me my ratio of lengths. And it is two to five. My ratio of areas is my ratio of lengths squared. So that is going to be 4 over 25. And my ratio of volumes is either my ratio of lengths cubed or my ratio of lengths times my ratio of areas. So either way, 2 times 4 is 8, and 5 times uh, 25 is 125. I'm going to get that as my ratio of volumes. As it turns out, those are basically the questions that they are asking. In part A, they say, what is the ratio of there? Who cares that they say base? We're talking about any areas. So in part A, and I realize that this will be a little small and hard to read, uh, I'm just gonna say, oh, it's four over 25. It is the ratio of any of their areas. What is the ratio of their heights, I ask in part B? Well, that is any length, so it is two to five. Uh, part C says, what is the ratio of their volumes? Okay, we solve for that. That is 8 over 125. And part D uh, takes it one step further and says, what is the volume of the larger pyramid? So now we are going to uh, kind of go to the higher purpose of these ratios here and solve for a volume. So we're saying that 8 over 125, which is the ratio of their volumes, I'm going to use it and make a proportion, is 80 over x. Well, hopefully without doing much work, you see what the answer is here. Um, to go from 8 to 80, I multiplied by 10. So to go from 125 to x, I must also multiply by 10. And so I'm going to get 1250, 1250 as my answer. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, I think they increased a little bit in difficulty from there. Uh, two, similar prisms have base areas, uh, bases with areas that are two and eight. Okay, so I'm off to the side. I'm writing ratio of lengths. I am writing ratio of areas, and I am writing ratio of volumes. Uh, when they told me two similar prisms have base areas that are 2 and 8, they're giving me that the ratio of areas is 2 to 8, but it's reducible to 1 to 4. The ratio of lengths this time, I always think it's uh, harder when they start with something aside from ratio of lengths. I go backwards and find it. Well, if I to go from here to here, I square. To go backwards, I square root. The square root of 1 is still 1. The square root of 4 is 2. And then to go forward to ratio of volumes, I'm going to multiply this by that, and I'm going to get one eighth this time through. All right, in part A, they say find the ratio of their perimeters. Well, a perimeter is a length, that is one half. Uh, in part B, they say find the ratio of their lateral areas. Can't fool me, a lateral area is an area, that is one fourth. And C, of course, find the ratio of their volumes, one eighth. And find the volume, this time, of the smaller one. Uh, so one over eight equals X 
corresponds to the smaller one over AD, and this time X equals 10 for part D. Not so bad so far. Okay. Uh, I went a little bit beyond in the next one uh, and found a picture of this frustum. I always thought it had an extra R in it, but when I looked it up, it does not. Okay, uh, when a pyramid or a cone is truncated, the resulting object is called a frustrum. Uh, when you see one with a truncated cone, I always think of those things that elephants stand on in the circus. They stand up on their hind leg, they go, <laughs> you know, frustrum. Uh, the missing pyramid on top. So uh, the frustrum is a pyramid missing a smaller pyramid on top. The missing pyramid on top is similar to the complete pyramid before the top was cut off. If the top of the frustrum has an area of 27 and the bottom has an area of 75. Okay, so doing my same treatment where I talk about ratio of lengths, ratio of areas, and ratio of volumes. Well, they're starting off by telling me the ratio of areas. The top of the frustrum which remember is the bottom of the small pyramid, uh, has an area of 27, and the bottom of the frustrum, which is the bottom of the large pyramid, is 75. This is reducible, uh, both are divisible by three. If I divide by three, I get nine over 25, and it looks like I'm being nice, that these are nicely square rootable, the ratio of lengths is going to be 3 over 5, and the ratio of volumes is going to be 27 over 125. Okay, let's see what we got. In part A, the ratio of the lateral area of the small pyramid to the big pyramid. Okay, that looks like a ratio of areas. So my answer is just 9 over 25. In part B, the ratio of the height of the smaller pyramid to the larger pyramid, that is a uh, one-dimensional thing, so that is a length ratio. C, uh, the ratio of the volume of the smaller pyramid to the larger pyramid, okay, that is 27 over 125, and then we got a little tricky. The ratio of the volume of the frustrum to the large pyramid. So that is still going to be something compared to 125, but the top is really the big pyramid minus the small pyramid. So in this case, it is going to be 125 minus 27 should be 98 over 125. Kind of, uh, kind of interesting on that one. And the last one I'm going to do with you is number four. Uh, two similar prisms both have bases that are right trapezoids. The smaller pyramid's base has a length of five and a median ten. So what do we have here? We have a ratio of lengths, ratio of areas, and ratio of volumes. And I am in the right place on the screen. Okay. Um, the smaller pyramid's base has a height of 5 and a median of 10. The larger pyramid's uh, base has a height of 7. Okay, so it looks like the ratio of lengths is 5 to seven. Uh, and I think I'm going to have to use that in order to find some other things. Okay. Uh, the larger pyramid prism itself has a height of 20. Okay, uh, so I'm going to say that five over seven equals 20 over x and find the height of the small pyramid. Now these numbers don't work out nice. I've got one hundred sevenths. One hundred sevenths equals the height 
And I'm going to go uppercase H to remind myself that it's the height of the small, uh, and we're doing prisms here. Okay, uh, what about the median of the smaller one? Uh, the median of the smaller one was given at 10. So I'm going to use the same ratio and I'm going to say 5 over 7 equals 10 is the median over, I guess I should call it y this time because I've already used x. And this time I'm going to solve and I'm going to find that 14 equals the median of the large, uh, I'm going to say trapezoid here, large trapezoid, the trapezoid, which is the base of the larger prism. Okay. Um, right. What does it say? It says find the base area and the volume of each prism. Okay. So, by the way, over here, I'm going to fill in real quick and get 25 over 49. My ratio of volumes is 125. Uh, 49 is close to 50. When I multiply 50 by 7, I end up with 350. Uh, but that's 1, 7 too many. So I'm going to subtract 1, 7 and get 343. Okay, this is going to come into play at the end or at the beginning, depending on which way uh, you want to go here. So uh, the area of the smaller uh, base. So base is a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is median times height. Uh, and again, uh, the height of the little guy was 5, and the median was 10. So its area is going to be 50. So that's one of the questions that they wanted. Um, the base of the big guy, on the other hand, well, its median was 14. I'm going to still say median times height. And its height was, uh, did we ever find that one? Uh, the smaller prism has a height of seven. Yes. Okay. And that is seven. So uh, this is 49 times two. This is 98. Okay. Um, once I found one, I really didn't need to do this to find the other. After all, their ratios are 25 to 49. And so is it true that 25 over 49 equals 50 over 98? Of course it is. So once I had. Uh, the proportion, all I needed was one extra. So check, that guy works. All right, uh, next up, they asked me to find their actual volumes. Shouldn't need a whole lot of space because these are prisms and the volume is area of the base times the height. Uh, the area of the base for my small one uh, was 50 and its height was 100 hundred over seven. So I'm going to end up with 5,000 over seven as the volume of the small one. Uh, giving the same treatment to the big one, uh, volume is still base times height, base times height. That is 98. Probably getting a little hard to read down here. And I do apologize. Uh, 98 times the height of the Big one and the, uh, the big one is 20. And so 98 times 20 is going to be 400 and uh, no. Uh, this is this is me using a calculator this fine morning. 98 times 20. That's pretty sad. I should not be doing that. Uh, 1960. Okay, and again, are these in this ratio here? Uh, 125 over 348. I'm going to multiply both of them by 
seven. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna multiply by seven and I get uh, 13,720. This time seven is just 5,000. Um, so I'm gonna say divided by 5,000 and I get 2.744. If I do 343 divided by 125, I get 2.744. It seems legit. That one worked out as well. So yes on that. Two different ways of finding the volume. All right, guys, uh, there is a problem number five, which I will expect you guys to uh, do on your own here. Uh, it talks about a dollhouse, which is a replica of a real house. Uh, really, the bottom line is you need to find those ratios, and you need to determine which of those are going to be the same as the ratio of lengths, areas, volumes, or perhaps some other things. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good it's Tuesday. Uh, I have a friend who feels like every day is Tuesday since this whole thing started. Um, I can't say that I disagree with him. Okie dokie. Um, I will talk to you guys soon, and I will have already seen you today, so uh, I will wish you a good day again.